Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Rangers Review Morning Briefing on Tuesday, the 19th of December. I'm Derek Clark, and I'm joined this morning for the first time this week by Chris Jack. How are we doing, Chris? Not too bad, Derek, not bad. First time I've spoken since a late finish on, on Sunday, but um, it, was certainly a, it was certainly a good day. So when, when things like that happen, all the all the hours and all, all the efforts pay off for if our players, managers, and uh, Rangers review writers alike. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, lots to talk about, folks. Uh, just a bit of admin. First of all, uh, good news is that those of you who like to use the Instagram app, we are now live on Instagram for our first time ever. So uh, you can watch us on there if that is your uh, app of choice. Um, and also a, a quick word as well for our podcast sponsors, the MPH Group, uh, the great guys over there that, uh, that um, do your home improvements. If you're looking to um restore your home perhaps and these are the guys to call they've also got a fantastic winter boiler promotion on just now if you're looking to replace your tired old boiler then give these guys a call they've got great flexible finance options available uh and uh, as well as a parts and labor uh, guarantee as well so uh, the all important links are in the description below um so do go check them out if that is something that is on your mind this christmas right um what to talk about? We'll, we'll kick off this morning, uh, Chris. Uh, you've got a piece on the website. We'll touch on that shortly. Um, Lauren Shankland uh, has responded to speculation linking him with a, a possible January transfer to Rangers. He, of course, scored uh, against Celtic on Saturday. Well done, Lawrence, as uh, Hearts uh, uh, beat Celtic by two goals to nil. Uh, there's a lot of noise about his future, of course. Uh, he explained afterwards it's a sign you're doing well when there's speculation. That's what I take from that. It's always been the case throughout my career. There's always been speculation flying about. It's a sign I'm doing my job well and scoring goals. That's all I focus on, doing my job for Hearts and doing well. Um, he added on his goal against Celtic. He says, I was just focused on hitting the target. When you find yourself a bit free, it's just about hitting the target. It's always better when you're winning. That makes it more special. The boys can be proud of that performance. It's been a real long time since Hearts came here and won. You need those to enjoy those moments, and we deserve to enjoy it. I think it's the first time since 2007, incidentally, that Hearts have won in the league against Celtic. But Lauren Shanklin then, uh, speaking about said speculation, it wasn't quite a... Uh, I, I, I know uh, it's not quite a come and get me plea as, as well, Chris. I think he's playing his cards close to his chest that we, we, we would expect from him. Um, but this noise about uh, a possible January switch won't go away. No, it's, it's a name that's been doing the rounds for uh, the last few weeks now. I think since it became evident that Rangers would be uh, looking to move for a striker um, during this window, I think that's been evident almost since the summer window because we've Vulcan made their minds up on the on the forward options. It's clear that Rangers need to go and sign one striker. As we discussed last week, Derek, I think they probably need two if, if they're going to challenge on, a challenge on all fronts. I'd like to see a couple coming in. For me, Shanklin all depends on the price. If Rangers can get him for £2 million or so, I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, if it goes above that and it starts getting 3 4 anything above that, then for me, it, it, it doesn't make it doesn't make the an, enough sense in football and financial terms. Um, at, at his age, he's clearly not an asset that you're going to make money on. We've seen a, a, a lot of chat in the last couple of months um, about Rangers' recruitment strategy in general. They need to they make, make money from player trading. That doesn't mean to say that every player that comes in has to be someone you can go and make £5 million on. You, know, you can have other, other guys that come into a squad just to contribute to it. I think Shankland would be one of them. Um, at, at, at the right financial outlay, I think it makes mm. a lot of sense. There's also a sense that Rangers have... Kind of missed the boat on him. Now he's he's been in, yeah. he's been in, in in the market a couple of times over the last few seasons. It's one of these could have should have ones. Um, if our Rangers like, they didn't move for him, didn't move for him at, at, at the right time. But domestically, he knows the he knows the way to go. Um, I don't think he's going to come in and be the number nine that you're going to build a side around to go and potential challenge in the latter stages of of the Europa League. Uh, but if you're looking for a guy who can contribute in terms of scoring Premiership goals and scoring Cup goals in Scotland. I say around about the £2 million mark, I think for me, it's a it's a move that Rangers should be, it should be making. But um, I say a lot comes down to the 
uh, to the financial outlay on it. Yeah, uh, lots of comments coming in with regards to that. Uh, Ian Edwards with the point says, can come on get better than Shankland for £2 million? Pounds? I doubt it. It's whether Hearts will play ball at £2 million, Ian. That's, uh, I know there's a few Hearts fans um, that are here that, that are wanting upwards of uh, £5 million pounds for them, which I can't see Rangers going anywhere near that, to be honest. So uh, there's going to have to be a bit of toing and throwing. Uh, between both clubs, uh, when was on the, I was on the, the members Q and A show yesterday, there was like the, a suggestion Rangers should wait, should use uh, a couple of players perhaps uh, as make weight to, in the deal. I can't remember the last time Rangers uh, had a, a, a sort of trade off like that, Chris, a, a player uh, exchange, if you like. Can you remember the last time that that occurred at Rangers? Um, the Scott Wright Ross McCrory one, maybe. Uh, I, 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 can't remember exactly how that deal ended up being done in, in the end, but I think that there was a bit of, well, they, I really know they wanted McCrory, we wanted right, and some money changed hands, and that, and that deal was done right around about that time. Um, I think it's, it's easy to say, we'll just go and give Hearts a couple of players. That's then assuming that those couple of players want to go and sign for Hearts, and the Hearts actually yeah. want those couple of players. Now, now, if, they're, if Hearts are going to have a transfer fee and they're going to have money burning a hole in their pocket, they might not necessarily want whatever off cash uh, Rangers want to get rid of during January. Obviously, Alec Lowry is the is the obvious one. It remains to be seen what future he's going to have, if if any, um, under under Clement at, at Ibrox. Um, but I think it, it all comes down to all comes down to the to Hearts Hearts demands here. If Hearts are going to somehow sell for two million, great Rangers then go and. If Rangers then go and do it. I just don't see it. Just don't see it happen, unfortunately. As as the comment says there, if you yeah. if you're hearts, why why would you sell such a prized asset and such a uh, such a key player for uh, for two million? If it gets anywhere near five, then Rangers won't be at that particular negotiating table. If hearts get five million for Lauren Shankland, then fair play to them. I wish him and them all the all the very best. But he will not mm. be a, will not be a Rangers player uh, for five million pounds. That's just that's just not happening. Um, so I say, if, Hearts, if Hearts want to deal at, at the lower end, by all means, I think it's something Rangers should explore and certainly, I certainly go for. When it starts getting slightly higher than that, I just don't see the, I just don't see the value in it for Rangers. Yeah, uh, listen, it's one to keep an eye on, but uh, yeah, Lon Shanklin responding uh, to that speculation. Um, let's just go slightly left field. Uh, um, Blue Nose John got in touch yesterday uh, from the Frankfurt Loyal, uh, and he said he, he had a, a Ramazzotti after Sunday's uh, successful day at Hamden, and a question what it was. He says, hi, Derek. Uh, Ramazzotti is an Italian aperitif made with 33 different herbs. I had a doner kebab for lunch on Sunday so that... Uh, the Rama helped my digestion. Ever had a, a Rama saute, Chris? Hey, I can't say I have. No, I had had good kebab in my time, right enough. But uh, no, if, if if John's willing to recommend it, then I'll uh, I'll look out for it and see if I can get one in time. I see if I can get one in the, in the house in time for Christmas. Yeah, uh, thanks for that explanation. <laughs> Mike and John, you've had a few doner kebabs uh, myself uh, down the years as well. Um, just on the player trading month that the Rangers does here, uh, Brian Alvarez says, uh, Salenko and Van Vossen. Uh, I remember it well. I was actually disappointed at that time to see Oleg like, Salenko depart Rangers. I know he wasn't uh, the, the best of strikers and uh, exceptionally slow as well. Uh, Van Vossen, what a player he was. Um, and uh, unfortunately, he'd just be remembered for that miss against Celtic. But he, I thought he was a, a very talented player. And he showed that when he left Rangers and joined uh, Feyenoord. And I think he won them the, the UEFA Cup. I'm not sure if he played against Rangers in, in that season um, when uh, Feyenoord went all the way uh, and won the trophy. But um, yeah, I remember that uh, player exchange well. Uh, let, let's look at... Um, your piece on the website, Chris, uh, on uh, Philip Clement. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, he was a, a very happy manager on Sunday. Colin Cooper with the point that anyone else fear Clement dropping the trophy off the balcony. Yeah, he was uh, he was loving it on Sunday. Uh, we back down to business uh, yesterday, though, with a big game coming up on Wednesday night. Uh, he was uh, speaking uh, after uh, tasting that success on Sunday. Some interesting quotes uh, that he said. That he went, I did some crazy things when we became champions in the past and I had the bad luck. There were videos made, so don't use it against me now. Uh, and they said, no, I'm really happy for the players. And of course, I had a drink with them on Sunday evening and with my family also. But in the back of my mind, 
It is Wednesday already. That is who I am. I wanted to enjoy Sunday evening because I did not do that enough during my career as a player first and then as a manager also. I am learning these things to enjoy these moments, but the most I am happy for is everybody around me. It was at pains to say it wasn't about him in the post-match press conference, Chris, afterwards, um, uh, taking the sort of the shine away from him. It's well and truly him. He's turned around this uh, squad of players and, and made them winners almost instantly. Um, but attention now turns to Wednesday night, a huge game for Rangers. It does. I think the the way that the manager handled uh, handled post match and handled the celebrations, and he's also doing his press conference um, later on this afternoon. And I'm sure how he'll handle that is very much business as usual. He's not getting too carried away. He's not um, getting going away OTT in, in, in terms of celebrations. He was right. He was right to enjoy you know, the moments they had with the fans, the moments they had outside Ed, Edmonton House on on Sunday. Will, um, will, will certainly mean a lot to him, but it's just, it's just a wee taster. I'm sure he went home that night. I'm sure a number of the players went home that night thinking, well, if this is only the League Cup, if you like, imagine what it will be like here if we can win the league. Now, yeah, uh, also those of us who are fortunate enough to be at Ibrox during the 55 campaign and uh, the fans that were outside, that that was a, a an insight into just what success and what league titles mean, mean to Rangers. The next one, when it's full crowds and when people can really go and enjoy themselves without lots of COVID restrictions and all the rest of it, the next one could be could be even better. It's not going to be more historic. It's not going to mean more because of what 55 main, meant to the club. But the celebrations, if the league can be won in May, will probably top what we saw uh, that day and certainly what we saw after the, after the game on Sunday. Um, I think if you are new to the club, just a wee insight into now this this is a really special place to be to be one playing your football but two to be playing winning football um, and I think that will really if if Sunday doesn't um, inspire the manager and inspire this squad to go on and achieve further successes then they're in their own place and they're as well packing their bags and just and just heading off now Rangers, Rangers can't be a club that's just that's just one and done it has to be sustained success and that's what we all thought was going to happen when Stephen Gerrard delivered fifty five. It's obviously not happened in the in the season since. That now has to be the ambition for Clement. He's got the first one in the bag. He's given himself a foundation. He's seen what it means to the club, to the fans, to the uh, to the squad. Now's the time to really go and kick on. And you only you only do that by parking it and then really focusing on um on the domestic matters. And that obviously starts on also starts on Wednesday night against uh, St Johnson. That then feeds into Fur Park and the, the momentum that Rangers can can build from from Sunday. Is huge. Um, and they just just have to keep that going. Head, head into the head into the January break. Um, really put themselves in a, a strong position in the in the title race. See what we can do in the window. See what the manager can can do in terms of strength in the squad. And the second half of the season then just opens up for Rangers and so many uh, so many possibilities. Yeah, uh, good to have a Hearts supporter tuning in. Uh, Daniel says, I'm a Hearts fan. He's going nowhere. Just talking about uh, Lauren Shanklin. So uh, uh, thank you very much for, for watching us, Daniel. Um, interesting, another quote from, from Clement in that, that piece, folks. I'll, I'll put the link in the description box as well. Uh, just on uh, looking towards the, the league title, uh, it says that we have no control about how other teams are performing. Winning titles is winning marathons. I won a few marathons together with other teams, with other staffs with other player groups, so I know how to get there, and we'll go hard for that. But, of course, there are also opponents with a lot of qualities. Uh, an interesting game on Wednesday night. Um, there's an interesting question here from Maka. He says, morning, guys. Uh, Chris, do you think if Levine deploys his infamous Scotland 6-4 formation, Big Phil will work his magic and break it down? Not entirely. Uh, it won't be a 6-4 formation, Maka, but I imagine it will be a uh, um, congested backline line. Uh, Two buses will be parked probably, uh, and he'll look to deny and frustrate Rangers as much as possible. Chris, he's a new manager in there. Uh, he's, he, he gets teams well organised, Craig Levine, and I imagine St Johnston will be organised on Wednesday night at Ibrox. It's up to Rangers to find low solutions to get in behind. As it and it's it's a type of game that Rangers have also had you know, for many 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 years. The the, the pattern of, of of the game on, on Wednesday night it's not going to be a surprise. Emdy who turns up thinking it's going to be anything different is going to be sorely disappointed. We know how St Johnson are going to are going to approach it. We know how Craig Levine um, is adept at set, setting teams up to be to be hard to beat. Um, I don't think he would be as uh, defensive as the 
as Maka says there, but he's not going to come and be expansive. St. Johnson okay. aren't going to come in and have a go at Rangers. They're not going to make it easy for them, but I think you only have to look at their, at their upturn and, and form over the last couple of weeks uh, since Craig has, has gone in there. It's, it's a really tricky game for this uh, Rangers now. Um, it's not a St. Johnson side who are at the wrong end of the table, who've only got a couple of mm-hmm. points on the board, who are really struggling for performances, really struggling for results, really struggling for confidence. All those all those things have turned in their in their favour now. And uh, the games like Wednesday night, um, they're not going to define St Johnson's season. Uh, it's not going to be the most important fixture that Craig pinpoints during this festive uh, during this festive schedule. Anything they get at Ibrox is a huge bonus for them. But that doesn't mean to say they're just going to turn up, accept their accept their three 0 defeat, and then head back up the road. So Rangers are going to have to work for it. And I think as as the manager said in that in that piece that's on the website this morning, it's about confirmations. It's about can you can you go to Seville and then come back and win the cup final? Can you win the cup final and then go and beat St Johnson? Can you win a game at home and then have a tricky one at Fir Park? Can you then again win again at, at Ibrox? when a huge expectation on you and ultimately can you then go to Parkhead and really capitalise on the momentum that you hope to that you hope to uh, build. So I think there's there's a lot of, of questions the squad still have to answer, a lot of questions the manager still has to answer, but they they will be answered in time. And and the more the more boxes Rangers keep ticking, the more of these hurdles they keep over overcoming, and the more confidence, the more belief that the fans can then have that this actually could be a special season for them. Yeah, an interesting point from uh, Matthew Ross, and uh, it sort of harps back to uh, Derek Adams' uh, uh, pre- well, uh, interview at the end of uh, the Ross County's game against Dundee at the weekend, which I thought was uh, really interesting. Um, Matthew Ross says, the low block is killing Scottish football. It's never been as bad as it is just now. I speak to fans that go to Ibrox, Chris, and this is no disrespect to the teams that come there. Um, listen, if you open up, you're going to get picked off more often than not, so I don't blame them for coming and trying and making it uh, as ugly as they possibly can. But as a spectator, it's not good to watch, is it? I don't expect it to be a uh, one of these um, free-flowing, uh, brilliant-on-the-eye uh, games of football on Wednesday night, but that's nothing against St Johnston, who are there fighting for their lives. As you mentioned, Craig Levin has got an upturn in them. They're battling away. Uh, but as a spectator... Do you think yeah, Derek Adams has a point? He says that the, the quality was uh, as bad as he's seen it. I think. I think in terms of how these how these teams approach games against Rangers and and also Celtic, they fall into the same bracket. It's it's no surprise because you look at the the gulf in resources between Rangers, Celtic, and the rest between like Hearts, Hibs, and Aberdeen, and other some of the bigger uh, clubs in the league. There's a really really big uh, financial and resource gap there. When you then get down to St Johnston, Ross County, Livingston, the gaps are just massive. Um, so the, these teams cannot compete. That doesn't mean to say that they can't um, they can't come and make life difficult at Ibrox or go to Parkhead and get and get results. Certainly, when Rangers and Celtic go to go to their venues, what I've seen Celtic drop points at Kelly in the last couple of weeks. Rangers know all too well over the last few seasons how difficult some of these away games can be to go and pick points. But o- overall, and over the course of a season. Teams just don't have the don't have the finances to be able to build squads um, to try and um, to try and compete with the old firm. So I don't mm-hmm. think it's any surprise that they then come to Ibrox thinking, well, if we can if we can keep it tight, we we know the we know the um, the format for these for these games. You come, you keep it tight, you don't do anything silly in the first twenty minutes, half an hour. You try and turn the Ibrox crowd. If you can get the Ibrox crowd on players back, it's then how they how they uh, then respond to it. Get into the break at halftime. You might even get around the boo, uh, booze uh, on the on the Rangers players as well. It's then the same format after the after the break. Keep it tight. Don't do anything silly. So these these messages are the are, are what managers will be telling their players heading into games at Ibrox and games at Parkhead. If you're if you're the home crowd, it doesn't make for it doesn't make for such a, a great spectacle. As I say, Derek. No, yeah. I, I, there's also a huge emphasis on Rangers to go and be creative and score goals and win these games comfortably. It is easier said than done at times. Uh, I think the most important thing from a Rangers perspective is just that they take care of these games because I say, we know what they're going to be like, but we also know come the end of the season just how important they are. Um, and if, if Rangers don't, don't win the league and they slip up on Wednesday night, it'll be, well, that was the that was the game that 
and the cost is. So there's there's a lot at stake for Rangers on, on Wednesday night. I say the, the approach from St Johnson will be roughly the same as we'll get from Ross County this time next midweek and probably Kelly on, on the second and a number of home games after that. Ultimately, it doesn't matter how these teams come and uh, set up, how these teams come and perform. Rangers, better manager, better players, bigger expectations, just have mm. to find a way to win. Yep. Just on that, I know I'm deviating slightly. Uh, David Martindale was speaking about it yesterday as well, about uh, Adams' comments. He, he sort of agreed with him, uh, and he also said that he, he'd like to see a bigger league, uh, Chris. Uh, that's something I think that I think many people would like to see. 16-team uh, league, for me, would be uh, a good thing. Is that something you, you would like to see maybe going forward? Could that maybe improve the spectacle and the, the quality of football? Again, from a purely selfish Rangers perspective, I'm not sure it'd make that much of a that much of a difference because if you had another four teams in the league, those four teams are still going to come to Ibrox and set up in the same way because they're not going to even yeah. if they think well if we finish tenth, it's a good season and we'll just we'll just be happy with that. They're then still not going to sacrifice or take the risk of potentially losing five at Ibrox by coming and having a having a real go. Um, I, I do fear that if, if they went to the bigger league you would just end up with more teams with very little to play for because um, you mm. still have the top two will go away. That's that's not going to change. Just because there's more teams at, at, at the bottom end doesn't mean to say that Hibs and Hearts and Aberdeen are suddenly going to be able to go and challenge the old firm. So at the top of it, and from our perspective, I don't think it would make a massive, massive difference. At the bottom end, you're still going to have the ones who will naturally struggle. And I just think you end up with a big clump of teams in the, in the middle um, who have very little to play for. They're not going to challenge for European places because, again, they don't have the budget to match Hibs, Hearts, Aberdeen. They're not going to be that bad that they're going to uh, find themselves in the relegation battle alongside your counties and your levies and like some of the championship teams in D90 or Wraith or whatever mm-hmm. it is that comes up. So I, I, I can see why people would, would like to try it. It's perhaps worth a try for, uh, for a couple of seasons, um, but I don't think it would make a make a massive difference to, to the spectacle that Rangers and Celtic fans would be seeing it would be seen every week. Yeah, uh, a lot of different comments, just uh, differing views on a potential expansion of the league, but I don't think it's coming anytime soon. Uh, lots of questions coming in as well, saying is there a presser today? There is, guys. It's uh, Philip Clement will speak to us. Uh, around about half past one this afternoon. Just the manager today, no player, um, but uh, Chris is heading over to the training centre for us a little later on, so we'll have all the reaction from there. Uh, we'll also have a, a press conference reaction video uh, on the, the, the members channel as well, so want to keep an eye out. But um, yeah, we'll hear from the manager. We will hear also, um, at, well, he usually tries to keep his uh, cards close to his chest when it comes to injuries, Chris. I know he doesn't really like talking about injured players. Um, he'll surely be asked about Ryan Jack, who missed Sunday again. Another game that he's missed now. Um, hopefully, he's, he's back in contention on Wednesday. Is there any others? It was good to see Scott Wright, incidentally, mm-hmm. the weekend coming back on. Any others you think that might be close to a return? It's almost a one step forward, one one step back, or more than one yeah. step back for Rangers here. Now there's positives in, in terms of, as you say, Scott Wright coming back in, but we then had a news obviously the other day that it's Fuentes is injured, so hopefully that's not yeah. a, that's not a bad one. Um, it's leaving Rangers somewhat short in terms of in terms of midfield options. Um, so no, it's not. Also, Fuentes would have been uh, suspended for this one anyway, so it, it's not a it's not a huge concern um, in terms of Wednesday night. But going going forward. Um, Rangers do look somewhat short of a midfield options. Um, as impressive as John Lundstrom has been, I'm not sure he can do the work of two guys in the, mid- in the middle of the pitch forever. So it's uh, ho- hopefully there's some good news on like a Lawrence um, and what's it Raskin, but with, these guys are not not imminent. It's not a not a case no. of no. We'll definitely uh, we'll definitely see them on on Wednesday night. Obviously, there that's also a problem because we're, we're losing guys for for far too long. Um, every time you see someone go down now. It's a case of you know, how yeah. you're just feeling. You're just feeling the worst. Um, I said losing like it's a Lawrence longer term again, losing Vasquez longer term again is hu- hugely frustrating for the manager. And you then pick up ones that you can't can't really afford. Jack, or the one you can't afford. Sefuentes, one you can't afford. If anything was to happen to Lundstrom or, or Sterling now, and leaves Rangers in a really difficult position. So fingers crossed. There's 
there's a positive update on on Ryan Jack because um, we know again we all know how good he, he can be, we all know how how, how influential he can be for Rangers. So fingers crossed because we're, we're we're going into a run of games where he's going to be needed. Yeah. Uh... There's a question coming in from, from JD, he says, uh, ask if Dowell is in Clement's plans. He was asked about a couple of weeks ago, uh, he says it's a, he faces a lot of competition in the area of the pitch that he plays. Um, and uh, I think it says a lot, Chris, I know he was an unused sub at the weekend, uh, but Dujon Sterling has been given the nod in that midfield area, um, which has been a, a masterstroke, you've got to say. He's been terrific in there. But I think that that speaks volumes about Kieran Dowell uh, and his future at the club. I would not be surprised if he was moved on next month. No, I wouldn't wouldn't be surprised and wouldn't, wouldn't be disappointed either because it's it's just a move that has not has not worked out. Um, it was the first, mm. first couple of weeks of the season. I don't think we really saw enough to to say well this guy is going to be one of the mainstays of the of of the side. Now, obviously, if he had been fitter and he had been available um, more often, he would have had um, would have had. Um, more and more game time yeah, just, yeah. just because of the injury situation but I, I'm, I'm still not convinced that Kieran Dowell is the, is the answer I think Rangers could spend could spend that um, portion of wages better I wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised if that's how the manager if that's how the manager sees it as well um, be interesting to see what business has, has done in January because we've also spoken about the need for forward reinforcements we'd like to see one maybe two strikers come in you're looking at someone to maybe play off the right hand side, but then as McCausland has come in and done very well in there, so that's perhaps negated the need for that. You're then looking at, at midfield, not because Rangers are if you write all the names down, it's not because they are they're short of short of bodies, but they're short of guys that are fit and they're short of guys that, that can be relied on uh, week in, week out. So I, as you say, Derek, I think the fact that Dell has has been overlooked for for Sterling in, in, in the last couple of games probably tells you where he is in terms of quality and how the manager sees him but also short mm. short of fitness he ha- hasn't played for so long now um, and it's going to take him a number of games to get back up to to get back up to the level so I think that's that's certainly one that I, I wouldn't be surprised to see a bit of movement on during the, uh, during the window Yeah perhaps there's a team in the North East that might like to <laughs> uh, acquire him uh, and that leads me on top G uh, if the point slightly uh, tongue in cheek he says uh, morning lads can we spare a thought for the Sunderland fans uh, this was the news yesterday uh, that Michael Beale has been appointed as a new head coach of the Mackhams uh, and uh, it was uh, interviewed by the, the club TV channel yesterday some interesting uh, points he mentioned about his time at Rangers, Chris. He says, uh, well, I went to QPR as a head coach. Uh, he's a head coach at Sunderland, incidentally, folks. Uh, and originally went into Rangers in the same role. There was a lot of changes with people leaving and I got pulled in different places. The thing I am really comfortable with here is the alignment through the club. My role being in line with that as a head coach and having an opinion and an idea on other aspects of the club. But I want to be the coach of the team, not the manager of the whole football club. This was a good fit in terms of alignment. I thought conversations were very smooth. There was a lot of common ground. I'm just looking forward to getting ready now in the exciting future of Sunderland. Um, are you surprised by this move? Uh, back in the game so, so quickly and it is... is uh, point there about being the head coach and being moved around places uh, at Rangers. We did say in the summertime that perhaps he was taking on more responsibility than he, he should have. Um, what's your, your views on this move, Chris? Uh, I, I must have just imagined all those press conferences where we're at with Michael Beal said, I'm happy to go and do all, all the recruitment. I've been flying yeah. here, there and everywhere. I want to sit down in front of players. I want to look in their eyes. I want to do PowerPoint presentations and and all the rest of it. Um, his um, his version of events differs somewhat from the way that I remember it during his uh, <laughs> during the last couple of months, it has to be said. I also think the the line, the comments about I, I want to be a head coach and I do my best work on the grass, well, that's fine. But in the last six, six months or so of his time at Rangers, there was no style about Rangers whatsoever. Now, how, you talk about boring games of football, a number of them were played well, Mel, now while Michael Beale was the uh, was the manager, um, I just I thought it was a really strange interview uh, from mm-hmm. from Michael Beale, uh, like forgetting what has gone on. What what are we, ten weeks or so since he uh, since he left? Um, yeah, like, clearly trying to ingratiate himself to a uh, to a new audience. But it was it, it was the same 
the same kind of lines that we heard at, at, at Rangers. It quickly, it quickly wore off up here. Um, and I think you'll find find out that if results don't fall, it'll quickly wear off down uh, down there as well. Um, slightly surprised he's, he's chosen a, a championship job as his as his next one uh, because we know how how difficult that that league is. If he doesn't get off to a really quick start in Sunderland, uh, fall out of a, a contention for the playoffs, he's going to be under a lot of pressure down there. And again, we, we know how how quickly um, championship managers can get the. He can get yeah. the bullet down there. Uh, if he wants to lose his job soon, there's then how, how do you get your, even someone who can who can talk the talk as well as Michael Beale? Where do you then go from there? So slightly surprised he's made that he's made that move. Um, very surprised at some of the some of the comments in his his press conference yesterday. So uh, not interesting to see how he's how this goes. One interesting to see what players he signs and what profile of players that Sunderland sign. Um, but if if his best work is on the grass, I'm expecting Sunderland to turn into 1970s Brazil over six weeks because uh, if that, if that's true, we, we certainly didn't see it up here. Yeah, listen, they're in a decent position, Sunderland. They're, they're seventh in the championship table, just uh, three points off the playoffs. They made the playoffs last season. I thought uh, Tony Mowbray uh, was sacked a little um, harshly, I've got to say. But, um, yeah, it'll be intriguing to see how he gets on there. Um, right, that'll do us there. Huge thanks to Chris, as ever. As I mentioned earlier on, folks, press conference day. Um, so we'll be hot-footing it over to the Rangers Training Centre and we'll bring you all the reaction from Philip Clement. Uh, lots on the website. Chris's piece on there. Still lots of reaction from uh, Sunday's glorious day at Hamden to uh, keep you entertained. Uh, we'll speak to you a little later on. If you don't uh, watch us later on this afternoon um, or for the, the press conference reaction, uh, we'll speak to you again tomorrow morning. Until then, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Bye.